Sustainability of attempts to achieve food security. We'll start by looking at ethical consumerism. And this is basically where people choose to buy their food for reasons apart from the cost. Um, so if you're buying food because you know um, it's been kind to chickens, or if you're buying food because you know that people have had con good conditions making that food, that's ethical consumerism. So firstly, there's fair trade. If you see this logo on any of the products that you buy, it means it's a fair trade product. Fair trade guarantees that farmers get a fair price and are treated well. It also guarantees that the food has been produced in environmentally friendly ways, um, such as not using um, chemicals in fertilizers or pesticides that might harm the environment. Um, it also means that when you buy your fairly traded goods, you pay a little bit extra, um, which is called the fair trade premium. And this money um, goes towards the communities where the food is being placed, for, exam uh, for example, to improve schools or health centres. So fairly traded goods, um, very socially sustainable and good for the environment as well. Secondly, in terms of ethical consumerism, um, we look at food waste. The ethical way of eating food is to reduce food waste um, in the household, in the manufacturing of it, um, within the fields, in transporting the food. And we're trying to reduce this amount. One third of food globally um, is wasted um, during its production. So here are two ways of trying to reduce um, food waste. Number one is eating ugly food. The wonky vegetables campaign starts in 2015. And another one is buying locally grown food. If we buy food from near us, it means it's less likely to be wasted in transport. So if we reduce food waste, it's very good environmentally um, because less electricity is having to be used in its production. It's very good socially um, because it'll improve food security around the world and economically um, it'll make sure that the food production is cheaper. Next, we're going to look at food production itself, so the ways of getting enough food. Around the world, intensive farming has been used to try to produce as much food as possible for everyone on the planet. Um, this is where we use a small space, we use lots of chemicals, um, we add antibiotics and growth hormones to animals, and we're using um, fertilizers, pesticides, um, herbicides on fields. Um, to try to get as much crop as possible. The use of the chemicals is environmentally unsustainable um, because they go into rivers and they go into streams and they produce algal blooms um, and uh, are bad for the environment. Chemicals are expensive and the cost of food production um, is going up, so it's not so economically sustainable. So intensive farming is, is something that we might be trying to move away from in the future. The absolute opposite is organic farming. This is just using entirely natural processes such as muck spreading um, to add fertilizer um, to our crops. Um, very few artificial chemicals are used, which means biodiversity is preserved. Crops are healthier. Unfortunately, the yield is slightly lower, leading to prices being higher but this is very environmentally friendly. Next, we're looking at technological developments. So this is using science, using skills and techniques to try to achieve food security. GM crops, this means genetically modified crops. You're taking DNA from one species, inserting it into another species to try to give the crops better characteristics. What are the better characteristics? We might try to increase the amount of crop or we might try to make our crops more resistant to drought, disease or pests. We might try to give our crop high nutritional values. It increases food security because the crop are less likely to die. Um, and um, the decreased use of artificial chemicals should mean the cost of food production goes down. However, we might be reducing biodiversity in fields because there's fewer variety of crops being planted. Another technical, technological development is hydroponics. 
This is where we grow crops without soil. Um, we put our crops within um, water, just let the roots hang in the water, and then all the chemicals that are good for the crop, we can put into the water that they are bathing in. This means there's reduced risk of disease from pests within the soil. Um, it increases environmental sustainability because you can grow more of the crop in a smaller space. Um, it's good for people, but it's expensive. And so if people can't afford them, it makes it less socially sustainable. Finally, we're looking at small scale bottom up approaches to improve food security. This is where individuals and communities try to help increasing food production. Urban gardens are where people are using empty land and spare land within cities um, to grow food. A good example is on the Library of Birmingham in the city of Birmingham, where they've got herb gardens on the balconies um, in the centre of the city. And this crop of herbs can be used within the city. Um, as the food is locally available, less likely is, it's less likely to be wasted because the food is being transported very short distances. It's also fresher, more nutritious. It can be cheaper because there haven't been the transport costs. It adds greenery to the cities, making them healthier and nicer, nicer places to live. And it reduces dependency on large scale farms. Another method is called permaculture. Um, this is where people are growing crops, growing food um, within their own gardens. Um, it's grown in a way that can recreate natural ecosystems um, you use fewer animal products. It's a way of life where people um, eat more fresh fruit and veg they've grown themselves. The food production is designed to keep the soils healthy and um, mixed cropping is used where you have different types of plant at different heights, um, providing normal space and light. Um, fewer pests and diseases are there because there's lots of different um, plants planted and we're using fewer resources which increases environmental sustainability. This table you might want to use if you are revising. See if you can fill it in and um, what you need to know is what um, the different ways are to try to improve food security and whether they are sustainable or not.